Hey, Lee. I can hear you now. Sorry about that. That's quite all right. How hey, are you? I'm good. Thanks for making the time. Of course. You, you look terrific. Thank you. You too. I feel underdressed. <laughs> no, not at all. Don't but be silly. The more this is going, the better, you know, I started out doing these in a hoodie and a pair of shorts. So, you know, it's getting a little right. as I go along. No, that's and, great. Uh, and it's, we, we've never met in person. And I know. we have a, a very uh, mutual, great uh, client and friend in Jason. Absolutely. Yeah. So That's uh, right. He loves you. Yeah. He's, uh, he's good people. His family, like you said, I think you said it in the email, the family, everybody, they're just great people. And, great people, great family. Yeah. I'm going to start there because, you know, I read through, I read through the website and I read through some of the, the information that I, I knew about, but, you know, reading it fresh, it seems like you almost pick your clients the way you'd want to go to dinner with people. You, you, you have this really great way of keeping this a boutique company in a world where more, more heads and bigger is better. And, and you pretty much put that aside to really take care of the clients and you have this great connection with the clients. Um, that's really impressive in a world where, you know, everybody's talking numbers and numbers of agents and all of that. Thank you. It, it's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. How, how many people are, are at the group? We're just a handful. That's, that's what's great. We're just one handful of people. And I never really thought of it as um, more people is, is bigger or better. Um, for me, I've always taken the opposite approach. I always wanted to be uh, lean. And privacy is one of the most important things to me and discretion always. Right. Um, so I never really wanted to be around large groups of people or strangers for that matter. Sure. So usually anyone that works with me is someone that I call has had a sponsor and it's someone that I know and trust who's recommended someone. Um, and I always felt that people are more accountable that way uh, because they know that uh, if, if they disappoint um, that I have a sponsor to go to. So sure. um, that's kind of always been my way. Sure. How, how are you and your family? Yeah, everybody's well. We, we've, been in, um, we've been out here in Quag for, it feels like uh, 38 years, but it's probably like 38 days. And uh, we're right. cooking every night. And uh, yeah, we're, we're doing right. what we're doing. And uh, you know, we're like everybody else, waiting to go back. Your family's well, everybody's well? Thank God, everyone's healthy, everyone's well. So we're good. That's, that's what it's all about at this point. You know, it's, it seems to be getting a little bit better every day. Yes. Uh, and right now my fingers are crossed for camp. Camp is my, right. I, I have know. my eye on camp more than anything else. So uh, yeah. I keep my fingers uh, crossed for that. But yeah, every, everybody's doing okay. Thank I you. hope it works out. <laughs> you and me both. Kids? I have two girls. How old? 17 and 20, almost oh, 20. So they've, they've passed the camp range. Yes. Yeah, so. Camp, camp's a big deal here. We got to, uh, right. no, I, got absolutely. A 14, I got a 14 year old who's ready to rock right now. So, Oh, I'm sure we will see how it goes. I hope um, it works. Thank you. So to pick up on, on what you were saying in this boutique. And I think if you look up bespoke in the dictionary, cause I, I read and did my homework. That's what this firm is. It's it it's. And with all of that, your numbers are off the charts, right? I mean, you have, the, you have the record for the most expensive townhouse sale in the history of New York City. That goes all the way back to when the Indians sold it for 24 bucks. What does that feel like in a small firm to be that consequential and that successful? Uh, thank you, Lee. I, I appreciate it. Well, one is uh, every day that I wake up, not, not only in the pandemic, but always in life, um, I always have a feeling first of feeling uh, blessed and fortunate. So that's how I start every day. Sure. Uh, and, and, and one of my mentors many years ago, he told me to always have two traits, uh, which is, uh, could be called H and H. It's, uh, I'm not referring to the bagels. Um, I know you're an Upper East Sider. Um, it, it's humble and hungry. Sure. So I always try to remember that, to be humble and hungry. And I think also one of the greatest blessings about living, uh, growing up and doing business in New York City 
is that you're, you see on a daily basis and you're exposed to the greatest talent in the world. True. Uh, and that, that is something that is always humbling um, because every day you're in the face of greatness. Um, and that's something that always has been very aspiring to me. And uh, I've always subscribed to the theory of, of going for the best. If you're gonna do something, do it the best at, on the highest level that you possibly can. Um, so that's my mindset. I so saw you, you, you did an Instagram, I think a week ago with A-Rod, and I'll ask you in a second, but you, I think you said you gave him credit for go for the best and leave the rest. Yes. And it, you know, it's a, it's a great mantra. It's a great way of doing it. Yeah. As I'm sure you've heard from many people is our business. There is a certain, uh, not only protocol, but there are certain steps to success and there are certain steps uh, for preparation and for execution. And whether you do that uh, for a property that's a studio or a one bedroom, whether it be for 400,000 or 500,000, or you do it for a townhouse that could be $100 million, the steps are the same. Sure. The process is the same. Sure. Um, the outcomes are very different. Um, so I think once you hone in on the steps, the process, the preparation, Everyone is different. Um, my aspiration always was to um, go, go straight to the top and, and do the best. Though I, I, you don't start out there, no. um, but 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 that but that's the goal. And I also I do view it. Um, you mentioned my my talk with Alex. I do view it as um, similar to an athlete. Um, that a great athlete to be successful or to go to the Hall of Fame, you don't hit home runs every time you get up to bat. You, you go to the Hall of Fame and you develop a great career by hitting singles. And then if you're doing all the preparation and all of the work, every once in a while, you know, you hit one over the fence. Sure. And the, the firm just celebrated, you're going into your 21st, your 20th anniversary in, in the bio, which I found fascinating. You had no previous experience. No. Which is awesome. I, 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 I didn't. Um, you know, as, as I've said before, is I, I don't come from a real estate family. Uh, and so I, when I started out in this business, I didn't know all the wonderful, wonderful people that I do know today. If I did, I would have just asked or begged them for a job or to right. be their assistant or to get them coffee. That really would have been a great route. Um, but absent knowing all of the people, um, I really had no other choice but to just start on my own. Um, and, and as you may have heard, I didn't have an office. Uh, I, I, I didn't have money to start. I was only able to make business cards and I got dressed every day and I walked up and down the street um, talking to anyone or introducing myself to people to develop my first clients. It's a, it's a inspiring bio, which then leads to the question. I've got a whole list of questions, but I'm going to go all the way down the list and come back up. What did you want to be when you were a kid? I think a, lo a lot of things over time I wanted to be when I was a kid. Uh, I, I, I did grow up watching sports. I'm sure there was a period of time where every boy that, you know, grows up, you know, at some point wants to be an athlete. Sure. Um, from watching movies growing up, uh, I'm sure there were times where I wanted to be like James Bond. Uh, I also... Um, Getting into, uh, before I was in real estate, I was in the fashion world. Um, so at one point, I know I, I was interested in owning a high-end uh, fashion store uh, on Madison Avenue. Uh, and then, you know, later on, I wanted to be a, a real estate uh, developer slash owner. Um, so o o o over time, uh, many different uh, role models and mentors and people that have come in and out of my life um, there is many things that I aspire to do. At one time, I wanted to be a sports agent, um, but here, here we are. Here we are. And uh, so the firm's got over a billion dollars in sales, this boutique firm, right? Handling- Two, but that's okay. Two billion? In what period of time? Um, over the course of the- Oh, years. I'm talking five, I'm talking five, six oh, yeah. years. You're- yeah, I mean, it's, that's what makes it unbelievable. 2015 till now, it's a billion in sales. You know, you've got a 
an incredible roster of celebrities and all that. I don't think that means anything to you. I think the way it, it reads to me, the celebrity could be, if the celebrity is a great person, you're in. And if the celebrity is not a great person, you could care less. You're not, that you're all about the connection. And so now you're doing all this business and you've known him for years. And in your free time, you've decided to start a real estate group with A-Rod. How's that going? Uh, it's so exciting. Uh, it, it's a, a life dream. Uh, and one of my ambitions is to own real estate. I've always wanted to do that. It's incredibly different, difficult to do, in particular in New York. And uh, Alex and I share a passion for real estate. Um, we have an amazing uh, partner and friend in Ophir Yardeni from Stonehenge. And when the opportunity presented itself, um, we just jumped on it. Um, and we were able to have a, a wonderful chemistry together. We have a terrific um, talent um, between the three of us um, to put together a great partnership. And I, I just couldn't be more excited. And, and we're looking to do a lot more in that space. Has, the, has current events changed your mindset of what you're going after and where, what you think the model of that group is? I think long term, the rental market in New York City is going to be very strong. Uh, Facebook took a million and a half square feet. Um, Amazon is taking millions of square feet. Google is taking millions of square feet. Um, and contrary to what a lot of people believe or read in the newspapers, everyone in New York doesn't buy a 20 or a 30 or a $40 million apartment. Correct. Right, <laughs> rightly. So, so the majority and the masses want to rent quality apartments, studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms. That's, that's the, the asset that we recently bought. That's the real estate and the multifamily that we'll look to continue to purchase. And those fundamentals are very strong in New York City. As a matter of fact, the, the, the culture today is people are looking for, instead of stability, people are looking for flexibility. Sure. It's the same reason why so many people, and, and that may change now with the pandemic, but why so many people don't buy a car or lease a car, you don't need to. You call, you, you, you call Uber. If you want a meal, you, you go for an app. If you want an apartment, you want flexibility. You, know, you, you, you can rent it. So I think there's going to be millions of people over the course of time that just want a nice, safe, uh, clean place to live. Um, and, and hopefully that's what we can provide for people. And the quality of the product at that market isn't, isn't there that much. So the, you are filling a real need to a large niche. And why people haven't picked up on that, you know, not your problem, but it's a great niche to have, to have that quality product, not overshooting the runway and not having something that was renovated 40 years ago. I also, I've always liked, always since I started in business and in every category, I like strong brands. And, and I like strong sponsors. Mm -hmm. So the Stonehenge brand has been around for many, many years. They have an impeccable rec reputation. I always look for integrity, great reputation, great track record, great name on the street. As you and I know, New York ends up being a small town. Um, and if you don't do the right thing by people, oh. it gets around really quickly. Really quickly. Um, Right. So, so in order to align with a strong brand and a strong principle, Stonehenge, Ofer, Alex, um, and myself, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. It's going to be fantastic. Let's, uh, let's go to a couple of fun questions and we'll come back to the business. Netflix, Amazon, or Apple? Are you watching? Do you have time to watch? Are you keeping your schedule uh, as much as you could or can? So... Previous to the pandemic, I would tell you, I don't watch television. Right. Uh, I, I don't watch it at all. It's not a high list of priority, of something for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, since we're here now and the world has changed a little bit, I've taken the opportunity to engage in some television watching. And so I would say I would start with Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, the first show that I watched was Unorthodox. And then Tiger King. Yes. Uh, most recently, this past week, season three, I started a Fauda, uh, w w which is fantastic. And then um, something that I hear millions and millions of people are watching over the last two weekends, 
which is very exciting, is the ESPN documentary, yeah. Last Dance, the yeah. story of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Um, and that's been awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a really, really good way to uh, not feel like you're killing time. It's a great story. And yeah, and also, you know, we're talking about um, inspirations and what keeps you motivated. And uh, of course, I, I grew up, and you probably did too, on Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, mm -hmm. and just uh, reliving some of those uh, stories and getting a little bit look behind the curtain um, is just incredible. Yeah. So since you brought it up, what's keeping you motivated and what's keeping you grounded? My family always keeps me grounded. Um, there's, I have a very good check uh, with my family to keep me grounded. Today in particular, to be grounded is very easy. You just have to turn on the news right. um, and see what's going on in the world. And then you, you, as long as you have your health, you feel like you have everything in the world. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really um, obviously such a sad and difficult situation, uh, what's going on in the world. And obviously we're all grateful to the first responders and, and being a part of such a great dynamic city in New York. It's, uh, it's an unbelievable time. It, re it really is. Uh, what's it like to be a dad in a pandemic? I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have two wonderful daughters. Um, as I mentioned to you, one just turned 17 last week. One's about to turn 20. Um, so uh, they are completely self-sufficient. Awesome. Uh, you know, they're healthy. They're wonderful. Uh, they're developing their cooking skills and... and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying them uh, helping to take care of me. Are you all together? We are. Oh, that's great. So you can, you can keep an eye on them in a, in, in yes. a world. And what's the best part of isolation for you? Best part of isolation is having an opportunity to uh, talk more to my friends and my family and my clients. I found one of the first things uh, that, that I did uh, when I was here the first week is I reached out to all my friends going back to elementary school wow. uh, and, and started just, you know, engaging my friends in conversation. And I'm grateful to have the friends that I do. I love my friends. Um, like our um, client and friend that we share is a childhood friend going all the way back from elementary school. And when we all get busy um, doing our business, it's never an excuse, but when you get busy with your business and your family and life, I find one of the things that you just don't have as much time to do is um, connect and talk with, you know, your friends, your family, and even, you know, talk more with clients. Sure. So because the pace has slowed down a little bit, uh, it's given me the opportunity to do that. And I feel really good about it. You're a New York guy. So here come a couple of New York fun questions on a hot dog. What is your favorite topping? Lee, I I'm sorry. I, I, I don't eat hot dogs. I, I stopped eat. I ate hot dogs as a child, but I probably haven't had a hot dog in 30 years. Wow, good for you. So, so it's, it's off the grid. Good for you. What about pizza? Same thing? I, I love pizza. Okay. I don't eat it a lot, but I love pizza. Um, and uh, I don't know how this will resonate with you, but my favorite, my go-to, my always, plain. No toppings. Nothing like a good margarita. No toppings, like a margarita. I think of it like a blue suit. It's perfect. Don't add anything to it. That's, don't screw around with perfection. Yeah, I mean, a plain slice is awesome. Now, for a guy who appreciates a great suit, have sweatpants gotten old, or you're, are you you know, in the suit most of the time? I, I really miss my suits. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's a part of my day. Uh, it, it's a part of my passion. Uh, it's, it's a part of my preparation and uh, sweatpants are okay for, for, for after hours. Gotcha. Um, but when I'm in, in uh, work mode, um, I like to be dressed. And since we've all been in isolation for, you know, we're pushing a month, give or take, what's the best thing you've eaten in isolation? As I've eaten a lot of great things um, in isolation. Um, I will tell you, the best thing that I've eaten is I took a run, when I say a run, in the car. So it's kind of like a secret mission with my daughter the other night. And um, I actually drove almost a half hour 
because the location closer to me was not open at that hour of the evening. But I drove almost 30 minutes for my favorite ice cream in the world, which, which is, is Baskin Robbins mint chocolate chip. Nice. We go through a freaking gallon of that here every two days. It's unbelievable. You have that? We have it here. You're kidding. We have it here. So, so you'll know, you'll, you'll appreciate. Every two days, yeah. Okay. Because I'm sure you know, given where you're located, but the quickest shot for me would have been Hampton Bays. Sure. They were closed on Sunday night. I went to Riverhead. Man after my own heart. I would have. Riverhead's got everything. And there's nothing like it. No. <laughs> that's this. You just, that if we could put a, a sign on the door, that's what we would be eating here all the time. Um, are, you, are you Amazoning? Are you Walmarting? Are you targeting? Personally, I do none of the above. Okay. Um, it's, it, it's, it's not how I, I, I shop. However, um, I, I live in a household with, with, with family. And uh, often when I come to the front door, I see Amazon boxes. That's so right. let's, let's go with that. It's like Christmas. And um, where's your happy place? When, it, when this is not or when it is going on? I actually, I, I feel very good. I have a lot of happy places. Okay. So right now, my happy place is where I am with my family in the Hamptons. Um, I also have a happy place in, in New York City, in Manhattan. Uh, my everyday happiness is walking down Madison Avenue to my office, to 57th Street. Uh, and apart from that is most of the places that I travel are my happy places, whether it's in London or Paris or St. Bart's. I'm always happy when, when I'm traveling to places I want to go to. That's great. That's, that's what it's all about, being in the moment. Um, before we get to the business questions, what's the first thing you want to do without a mask when this is all over? Travel. It, it's, the, it's one of the things really that I miss right now is not having the opportunity to look forward to a trip. Uh, or to go to go visit a client, or to go walk down a particular street in a certain neighborhood. Um, that's something that I miss very much. We need you need to, something to look forward to. Yes. Yeah. We went to the hardware store the other day. My daughter thought that was very cool. I'm like anything to look forward to, and there's a Dunkin' Donuts attached to the hardware store. So right. You roll the right. dice and a donut. It was great. Um, I forgot one more fun question because you're a New Yorker and we share. You know, people we know. Pickles, thumbs up or you don't get it? Yeah, definitely thumbs up. That's it. I love a good pickle. Good deal. Now let's get to the business. How are things? Um, what, what's, what, are you, what are you feeling? What, what's going on? You know, a, a, as you mentioned, we, we just celebrated recently 20 years in the business. And one of the byproducts of that is um, I, I feel calm a sense of calm actually about the situation as it relates to business. Mm -hmm. um, we've been very, very fortunate, as you mentioned, over the last many years uh, to do well. Uh, and again, I feel like an athlete, you don't always have to perform every night. You don't always, in business, you don't have to make deals every day. Mm -hmm. Our business doesn't work that way. And uh, I, I think also in a time like this, my and our first focus doesn't have to be doing deals. There's other attributes to our business. There's other characteristics. And here right now, we can just be there for clients. We can just listen. We can just talk. We can just ha have a steady hand in helping people think through their real estate and what may happen now in three months and six months or in 12 months. And I think because we've had that opportunity and we have that background and we have that perspective and we've been through other tragedies and other crises, not that relate to this specifically different, that we can be uh, um, calm and advise and, and don't have to have a knee jerk reaction to sell. Do you feel like, are you, are you getting whispers of people wanting to talk business, to talk deals, bottom feeders, things like that? Or is it more like you said, connectivity with clients and people? I, it's, it's all of the above. Uh, we are doing some deals now. 
Uh, we're doing some deals in New York City. Uh, I, I've been doing business in the Hamptons for the last six weeks, and it's been quite active. Um, and, and you're also fulfilling a need for people um, in facilitating getting people settled in an environment that they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And there are opportunities uh, for people. There are people that still need or want to transact. Yep. Um, sometimes there are people who want to be opportunistic or are investors that make low offers. And, and that's okay. I think, you know, the overarching theme is that I would advise, don't panic, try to be practical, try to be reasonable, and try to help create solutions for people. And what's, that all makes perfect sense. Are you adjusting your business model in this moment? Or are you just like you say, staying calm, not panicking, waiting? To I, I, we, we are adjusting our business model. I mean, one is in terms of communication internally, Typically, we meet in person once a week. Um, now we're meeting three times a week. Um, and we do it like this um, on Zoom. So our connectivity um, is, is even closer than we were before. I think the opportunity for culture and for leadership is even more present today. I feel like we are more connected today as a group than we were a couple of months ago or in previous years. Um, also, in terms of business plan, uh, we are shifting right now. Sometimes you have the saying, you have to go where the business is. You have to diversify. Right now, uh, I'm spending a lot of time doing business and helping facilitate transactions in the Hamptons. That's where the interest is this moment. Right. People don't have a dire need this moment to get into Manhattan. Um, but we are entering a time of year. It's going to be May now, June into the summer. So again, the opportunity to be adaptive and to have flexibility and be small and be nimble, I think plays well here in this market. Sure. And what, what, do, you, um, what do you bring to your team in a moment where maybe they wanna, they wanna go, they wanna do, they're, you know, they're used to the New York pace and there's no pace right now. So one is I, I have to share with everyone the, the voice of reason, which is relax. It's okay. You know, um, give your kids a hug, um, play, play board games, spend time with your family, recharge your batteries, reset. When you think about it for people like you or I, when in your life, apart from potentially, which was not even my case. I always worked my whole life while I was in school, when I was out of school. But for most of the world, the one opportunity you have in life is when you graduate college before you start your first job. Apart okay. from that, there are no timeouts. So take it as, as a blessing that you get a reset, recharge your batteries, and collect yourself together mentally, physically, uh, do, do your work, read more, read up on webinars, on panels. Every day there's real estate education. Sharpen your skills, hone your craft. And the idea is when this is over, come out of the huddle strong. Tighten your inner circle, shed people on the peripheral that are not beneficial to what you're trying to accomplish and, and come out on fire. Yeah. It's great. It's great advice. I thought about it the other day with a friend of mine. The last time I had a break like this, it was Camp Kiwani and I was 13. Exactly. Nobody's had it. And also the idea that absent the human toll, obviously, there's parts of this that we're going to miss. It's just the reality of it. Absolutely. I mean, typically, we, you know, we probably all live for our summer weekends uh, and you feel very grateful to have this opportunity to have a place outside the city. And you always, you know, pray for those nice days. You take the long walks, the bike rides, the barbecues, you know, swim in the pool. But to have this opportunity in March and April and May and for who knows how long, sure. you have to really appreciate every moment of it. Yeah. And you have, you have a 17 and a 20 year old. I have a 14 year old. And, you know, I think we'll look back on this in five or years maybe not even that much for you and go well that was awesome to have them 
right where I want them the whole time. It, 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 it's, it's so true. I mean, at, at their age, they could be in a car, they could be hanging out, you know, with friends, they can be doing all kinds of things, which is, you know, normal course of life for that age. So this is really the only two opportunity that presents itself where we're together 24 seven, six weeks already. That's right. And that's got to be one of the, it's got to be one of the, the silver linings for a guy who cares about his family. For me, it's got, it could be the number one silver lining to this whole thing. And I think when it's over, I'm going to be like, well, that, that was a good part of something that was really off the wall. I'll definitely miss it. We have yeah. three meals, we have three meals a day. We have, you know, games, you know, shows, cooking, drinks. Talks. Uh, In-person yeah. talks. Right. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's interesting, and it's, I think it's something I'm going to miss aspects of it. Um, what do you think a green light world looks like in Manhattan? Well, I, I would say that this is a case where um, first in here is not the winner. I, I don't see a scenario where we get a green light and the opportunity to win, so to speak, is running in and getting there first. I think that, again, with the idea that you take a more relaxed approach, a more thoughtful approach, and I, I, I would wait it out a little bit. Sure. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's going to miss out on any deals or fortunes by not, you know, getting in the car and being the first one across the Long Island Expressway to, you know, to get to the Triborough Bridge, or if I'm not the first one on Madison Avenue, the first one on 57th Street, the first one into my office building, Carnegie Hall Tower, we'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's and I think, you, I think you need to share that with people that you work with or with younger people that is this is a scenario where it deals with the most serious element in life, which is your health. Right. And I think there's a lot of work that we could all do uh, away from that. So obviously in our business, physical showings are detrimental in terms of making deals, sure. but there's a lot of work and other things that we could be doing. Sure. Um, I don't get the sense that we have to have this urgency to rush in. Hello. Exactly. exactly. Um, I, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I agree with you. She throws me off. I agree with you 100%. And I think what you said about the younger people, I've got people working for me and they want to do stuff. Right. And I'm like, it's okay. Right. You, I promise if God is good, I'll be here tomorrow. So if we can't do the call today at four o'clock, let's shoot for 10 tomorrow. There'll be right. a point in time where we won't have that flexibility. And I say to them, it's okay. Just relax. Right. And they, they want to move. It, and I love them for wanting to do that but they have a different perspective than say we do. And it's like, you know, it's okay. People would say to me, what's the first thing you did? Or what were you doing the first couple of weeks? I go, I was in an emotional coma. And then we played some ping pong and it was fine right. because there was nothing else to do. Right. And, and it all, it all worked out. Um, in closing, and you've given a lot of really good advice and a lot of really good I don't want to say information, but things that pe for people to grab onto. What's the one thing? What do you want people to learn from this experience? What's the takeaway for you? There, there are many takeaways. Um, one is, I would say, is never get too set in your plans. Is This shows that if anyone had any question, that there's obviously a, a God um, above um, that rules the world. And it's definitely not us. Um, and again, as I told you earlier, um, one thing that I think is a great takeaway is just the, the universal humbling effect in the world, um, is that I think every time, and this happens every 10 years or so, is every time everyone thinks that they're getting too big um, you know, for, 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 for everyone, there's a little knock at the door, there's a little reminder is, uh, remember, <laughs> you don't make the rules. Yeah. So, so I think it's, unfortunately, this should never happen um, and no one's life should ever be at risk. Um, but it is a reminder to everyone um, to lead a humble life um, and to be nice 
and sen uh, sensitive and, and courteous to your neighbors, to your friends, to your clients. Um, you know, for my office, um, I hope everyone takes away that when they look back at the six weeks, the eight weeks, the 10 or 12 weeks is that I'm always there uh, for my office, for my group. I will take care of everyone. Um, as you mentioned, the big firms, every day we wake up to these articles of them firing, furloughing, and garnishing wages. Um, and I feel very blessed that I don't need to do that. Um, so that's very important to me to take care of um, my office, uh, my family, uh, my friends, whoever um, needs it. Me too. I, I've kept it small for 30 years for exactly that reason. First of all, when you make plans, God laughs always. And you, you want to keep it to a point where you can manage it. In, and when there are twists in the road, you want to keep your people. You want to, you know, you want to keep it as, as calm as possible. So, you know, everything you're I, saying resonates uh, tremendously. I also, I mean, one of the benefits that I see from this um, which is something that we're doing today is it's an opportunity to start new relationships. Um, you, you have a phenomenal brand, a wonderful business, a great reputation uh, in New York City. And um, I appreciate connecting with you during this process because I think whoever we connect with during this time will always remember it. And now in the future, you know, I will look forward to working on projects with you or introducing you to clients um and it all starts here and i'll bring the pickles to the office I, i'd rather the baskin robbins mint oh, chocolate okay. chip ice cream I, you, you know, can bring the pickles too i'm wondering if there's a baskin robbins in the city there i think there's some i think there's one on second there should be because yeah. they 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 partner often yeah. retail with dunkin donuts yeah all right, so I'll get ice, I'll pack it up, I'll get the ice pack, hit or miss. Yeah. and I'll hit 57th Street. Here's my last closing question, given your uh, relationship with A-Rod. Were you a Met fan growing up or a Yankee fan? I was a Yankee fan growing up, uh, but I, I, I also did watch the Mets. Uh, I remember watching the 86 World Series. Um, I was a big fan and, and later on in life became a dear friend uh, with Keith Hernandez. Um, and, uh, and, and several of the other players actually as well. Um, so what's that? A-Rod was a Met fan. Yeah. Alex was a Met fan. One of his mentors and favorite players growing up was Keith Hernandez. We actually had a very memorable experience. I, um, in, in the late nineties, I had an opportunity, um, to, I was spending some time with, with Keith Hernandez and, and Alex and I arranged a golf uh, foursome for us. Um, and we all played golf together. That's great. Now I'm gonna tie the whole thing together in the last 30 seconds because I just realized something. When Keith lived on Third Avenue, he sold- Second his, Avenue. Second Avenue, he sold his apartment. Did right. you sell the apartment for him? I did not. Okay, because I have a client who bought it. Right, I so, so um, Keith, married a broker <laughs> well, okay. and at the time at the time they were selling it i said you know it's probably <laughs> a good idea for you to have your wife sell the apartment i mean yeah. I, I don't know a lot but it's yeah. just something i've been thinking <laughs> yeah. and and i'll and we'll be okay we're good we're, we're, we're good it's a great story. Thank you so much for taking the time. I, I look forward. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really a hug guy, it. so be prepared for Baskin Robbins and a hug when this is all over. Lo sounds great from Thank right now. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank the you so much, Lee. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.